Hello and welcome to a summary of all you need to know about the poem Poem at 39 by Alice Walker. I'll explain the meaning related to this poem as it appears in part 3 of the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. Now do bear in mind that in contrast to part 1 of the anthology, which featured only non-fiction texts, and part 2 which was a mix of fiction short stories and poems, Part 3 of this anthology exclusively features poems alone, so in this video I'll highlight key language and literary devices used in the poem and you'll learn how to analyse it. So let's get started. Now what I'll do is I'll read through parts of the poem, pause every so often and then point out important language and literary techniques. Let's first start with these two stanzas. How I miss my father. I wish he had not been so tired when I was born. Write in deposit slips and cheques. I think of him. He taught me how. This is the form, he must have said. The way it's done. I learned to see bits of paper as a way to escape the life he knew. And even in high school, had a savings account. Now, this poem is really, really powerful because it essentially seems to be almost a eulogy of somebody's parent who's passed away. More specifically, this poet, this speaker's parent and the father has passed away and they really miss them, but they seem to be reminiscing on all the good things that the father did and how positively the father impacted their life. Now, the title itself, Poem at 39. Now, do bear in mind that this poem is written in free verse and it's an autobiographical poem of Alice Walker's own parent, her father, as it celebrates her father and the influence that he had on her life. However, you can also interpret it a bit more broadly in terms of how this narrator, the anonymous speaker, however, we can presume it's Alice Walker. We can interpret it as somebody referring to how important the role the parent has played in their lives and the role particularly the father has played in their lives. Now, the in the title, the mention of the t uh, 39, essentially, this means that it was very written likely when Alice Walker herself was 39 years old. Now, the first line of the first stanza, how I miss my father, this line is actually repeated in line 25, as you'll see when we go further on in the poem. Now, what this does, this repetition, is it emphasises Alice Walker's intense grief at losing her father and the significance it's had on her life. But of course, you can also interpret it as it just shows the intense grief of the narrator and losing their father. Moreover, in line two, they state, I wish he had not been. And the monosyllabic language here is really simple, showing that the speaker misses all aspects of her father and we learn that he was so tired and this intensifier shows just how difficult life likely was for the person's father as they were raising them probably in poverty and however in spite of all of that the father tried their best to give this narrator a really good life. Moreover, there's a lot of enjambement used here and what this shows, of course, it adds to this uh, dramatic monologue, but it shows that this poem is almost a constant stream of thought by the speaker. And of course, do remember that enjambement does also speed up the pace of the poem. Now, in line five, there's a single word, born. And what this shows is that this stanza starts with the recollection of the speaker of her father from her birth. So do remember that autobiographically speaking and contextually speaking, Alice Walker is the youngest of all children. So she's remembering uh, how she was like when she was born, but equally how perhaps her father must have been really tired by the time she was born, but he still wanted to be a good dad to her. He wasn't disillusioned. He wasn't tired from having his previous children. Children, he wanted to still be the best father to her. Now, in the following verse, we learn that he was writing deposit slips, checks, the, then there's a mention in line 16 of savings account, and of course in line 17 too. This belongs to the semantic field of business and money. And what this does is it emphasizes the, her father's frugality. It also, to some degree, emphasizes the lack of money that they must have had, but also the father's focus on handling finances. So even if they didn't have that much, her father was really, really focused on not being crippled by bad debt and not being crippled by bad finances. And he passed on this message to his daughter, the narrator. Then the narrator states, I think of him and the repetition of the first person pronoun I. This is an anaphoric reference back to the speaker. It places the speaker, this narrator, center point in our focus. 
Now, in line eight, we learn, he taught me how. Now, what this shows, and especially the alliteration he and how, it shows that despite being tired, her father set time aside to teach and empower her, to teach her about money, but also to teach her about how to survive and even thrive in what can be a fairly difficult and challenging environment. Moreover, in line nine, this is the form. Now, the alliteration this and the echoes and emphasizes her father's direction when he's teaching her, okay, this is the form, this is how you visit, fill in a deposit slip, this is how you fill in a check, and so on. So he really took time to teach her about finances, which in many poor households is not really well taught. Moreover, in line 11, the way it is done, what this declarative sentence does is it emphasises the importance of education that her father placed, both on education at home, but also on education both in school and in other aspects of life. Furthermore, we learn that the narrator learned to see bits of paper. Now, this is quite informal, very conversational, and this is echoing the idea that this is a constant stream of thought. The narrator is telling us this as they just casually recall all of these different incidences from her past with her father. Now, in line 14, she saw these bits of paper as a way to escape. And the mention of escape highlights the importance of saving uh, and looking at money as a tool to secure financial freedom. And this is what her father taught her, which is a vital life lesson that she feels she really, really felt imparted upon. Now, she then mentions to escape the life he knew. And what this shows is the narrator's wistfulness, her sense of regret that her father had to live such a difficult life. So let's carry on. He taught me that telling the truth did not always mean a beating, though many of my truths must have grieved him before the end. How I miss my father. He cooked like a person dancing in a yoga meditation and carved the voluptuous sharing of good food. Now here, we learn again that her father carried on teaching her important lessons. Now, this is a repetition of line eight, which emphasizes how critical education is for her father. In line 19, she learns that telling the truth does not always mean a beating. Now, the alliteration telling the truth emphasizes the importance that her father taught her of being morally upstanding. And of course, being morally outstanding, being honest, being direct didn't always lead to corporal punishment. The reference to a beating refers to in some households where you're physically beaten for doing something wrong, for wrongdoing, and even especially for admitting truthfully that you did something wrong. However, she's showing actually, as opposed to this approach, her father would also reward her without a beating if she was honest. And so, of course, this shows that her father was actually very tender towards her. Now we learn that she states many of my truths. Now this possessive pronoun shows she takes ownership of her own learning and her own empowerment but also she emphasizes that as she grew older she started diverging in some of her views from her father and she really respects how he respected that. Now, her reference to the abstract noun truths is mysterious because we're not entirely sure what did she learn as she was growing older that maybe might have diverged from her father. However, even if we don't learn that, that's not the important thing. The important thing for her is that her father accepted her views, her truths, in spite of maybe not always agreeing with it. Now, we learn that her truths must have grieved him. And what this is showing us is that as she grew up, she became more independent with her own thoughts, which probably must have clashed with her father's views. And even if he must have felt sad at some of these thoughts, he still respected it. And the euphemism before the end, what this is, is a euphemism for death. And so she's reflecting that her father, even if they didn't necessarily agree on certain things, he still respected it, although he did probably hold in his heart a sadness that they were becoming so different as she was growing older. Then of course, as I mentioned, this is uh, line 25 is a repetition of line one, which shows the emphatic and emotional state that the narrator is in as they're really, really regretting not having had enough time with their father. How I miss my father. And this is also exclamatory sentence. 
then we learned that her father cooked like a person dancing. Now, the simile here shows her father was really joyous in an effortless way, and she really, really admired that. And we learned that he cooked like a person dancing in the yoga meditation. Also, this shows that uh, a really interesting kind of image in our minds of someone who's quite peaceful, but also quite joyous in an effortless way. Now, he craved the, he carved, or rather he craved the voluptuous sharing of good food. Now, what this shows is that he used to cook copious amounts and share it with everybody. So he was really, really generous. Now, let's carry on. Now, I look and cook just like him. My brain light, tossing this and that into the pot, seasoning none of my life the same way twice, happy to feed whoever strays my way. He would have grown to admire the woman I've become, cooking, writing, chopping wood, and staring into the fire. Now, this final part of the poem shows that actually her father was successful in imparting and teaching her the important life lessons. So she says, I cook, look and cook. And the rhyme here, look and cook, shows she takes pride in having learnt so avidly from her father and now imitating him. Moreover, the semantic field of cooking is used. Cook, pot, seasoning and cooking. And what the semantic field of cooking and food does is it shows that food was very likely a way that she connected with her father. Moreover, in line 34, she mentions tossing this and that and the alliteration tossing this, that shows that just like her father, she too is really effortlessly joyous. Moreover, she says, seasoning none of my life the same way twice. And what this shows is that she inherited her father's creative flair, both in the kitchen when it came to cooking, but even in her life. She always looked for excitement. She never got or settled into boredom or did the same thing twice too often. Then she mentions, happy to feed whoever strays my way. And she inherited his generosity, very likely, of course, when it came to cooking and sharing her food. But also this is a metaphor for how she inherited his generosity when it came to sharing happiness with others, sharing the good side of herself with other people, as her father did. Now, in line 40, she mentions he would have grown to admire. Now, what this shows is that the speaker is really proud of the person she's become, thanks to the influence that her father has had on her and the reference to the woman, this actually contrasts with the reference to born in stanza one in verse one, because this shows that her journey is now coming full circle. And also if you think about the title, it's coming full circle because she's now 39. She's reflecting on all the 39 years that she's lived, but also reflecting on how her father impacted the way she's lived her lifestyle for those 39 years. Moreover, there's the ascendantin that's used, cooking, writing, chopping wood. And what this does is it shows she's become just as fastidious and hardworking as her father. Now she's staring into the fire and this present continuous verb shows she's been quite meditative and reflective as she thinks about the life of her father. And finally, the reference to fire. This is a symbol of life and vitality. She still has life within her. However, she is reflecting on how she can make the life within her even better for the remainder of her life as she thinks of the life that her father has lived. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do note that we have an in-depth extensive course covering all the texts and poems in parts one, two, and three of the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. So do make sure you sign up for the course for explanations on all the texts as well as model answers. But also check out our website www.firstrateteachers.com where you can find plenty of English revision worksheets, model answers and online courses covering all the major English syllabuses including Edexcel, AQA and IGCSE. Thank you so much for watching.